So for my final review of 2016, I want to do something happy. So I decided to do a movie uh, about small town drug dealer, Satanist uh, murderers, Ricky Six. Um, I've been, you know, the past uh, couple weeks, uh, you know, everyone was watching Star Wars or Fences or whatever. Um, I've watched, um, I've, all, all the movies I've been able to watch are Jorg Bukharites. I watched Necromantic 2. I haven't watched Necromantic 2 um, in never. I never, I, don't, I, never I, don't, I never saw it. I don't know why. And uh, it's good. I think it's better than Necromantic 1. It really is a good, good movie. Very very uh, grim and depressing, but I saw Necromantic 2, and then I watched your book of rights, uh, Der Todes King, the, the King of Death, and um, and then yesterday I was like, let's watch Ricky Six. You know, I, I, I remembered that movie, and because uh, I was thinking about true crime movies that I wanted to watch, and I was like, let's watch Ricky Six, because I'd heard about it for years. I'd, I'd listened to a really good podcast on the making of the film uh, from the Projection Booth podcast. If you want to go uh, do a search for that, uh, search for the Projection Booth podcast, Ricky Six. And um, good, a good, good true crime movie. A really, really good movie. Directed, written and directed by this guy, Peter Filardi, who wrote Flatliners and The Craft. Uh, and I think when he got the deal for the craft, he'd already been researching and working on this uh, Ricky Six movie. Uh, Ricky Six is based on um, the uh, tr a true life case of murder in a little small town in Northport, Long Island. This guy, Ricky Cazzo, who was the called the Acid King. He was just like a little small town drug dealer, just like a little heavy metal kid. And he and his friend... Uh, murdered some, another kid that had stolen some drugs for him or not paid him for, for drugs or something. And so it was just a small town, but, but he was, Ricky Castle was, had done so much drugs, his mind was really messed up and he was into Satanism and it was a whole thing. And uh, there was a book that was written about him, uh, written about the whole uh, true crime case called Say You Love Satan. And it was uh, this book that the guy Peter Filardi read. Uh, he saw it in a bookstore, and it, uh, he, you know, again, he's like, "This is a great story. This is a great story." Now, the film was adapted. Uh, he he made Ricky Six in 2000, and it's never been officially released. By the way, it's always been. Uh, it's only available in a in a bootleg. It's available on YouTube in a, a few different places. I watched a version last night which had um, time code on it time code right at the bottom and it's like four by three and then there's a there's a couple of other ones that, that like it, it's like somebody downloaded the time coded version and just uh, tried to wipe out the time code and then there's one version that I'm seeing on YouTube that is 16 by 9 and it still is is very poor quality but it's just it's a little better quality so I would suggest uh, going after uh, that version. So and so not not all versions of Rick, R Ricky Six on YouTube are alike. Uh, so uh, do do your do your uh, uh, diligent uh, uh, your due diligent uh, googling when searching for a, a version. Uh, but anyway, there there have been a couple of versions of Ricky Six uh, filmed. Uh, I mean the Ricky Cazzo uh, uh, murder. Uh, Satanism uh, murder uh, filmed. There was uh, in, what was it, 90, 91 or 92 or 93 or so forth, Jim Van Beber, the uh, maker of the filmmaker behind Deadbeat at Dawn and the Manson family or Charlie's family. He had been, he was already making Charlie's family and, and in between, uh, you know, uh, trying to get the finishing funds and uh, getting, getting everything together to finish Charlie's family, he made this short film uh, called My Sweet Satan, which was released by Film Threat on VHS, and they, it got a lot of, it was, like, it was a short film. I, I, I think it's only like maybe 20 or 30 or 40 minutes. It's, just a, it's a really short film, and Jim Van Beber plays uh, Ricky Cazzo, or Cazzo, uh, I'm still not sure of the pronunciation of that. Uh, but it's, it's very much like a 90s update of the whole Ricky Cazzo, and it, it's 
it's very it's very much in the Jim Van Beber style. It's very much this uh, you know some some people that look like they walked out of uh, of a Nine Inch Nails video from the, the late '80s, early '90s. They're like an extra, in it. so they they got the dreads and the hair and 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 all of that stuff. And um, it it has some interesting stuff. I mean, it has a really incredible murder scene uh, at, at the very end of the film, but you have to get through a lot of boring shit to get to that murder scene and uh, in in My Sweet Satan. Uh, though it though to its credit, My Sweet Satan has a a better a better title than uh, than Ricky Six, which you're like, what is Ricky Six? Ricky Six. You know, I mean, it, it relates to his name. He was eighteen six 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 and all. The, but you, you gotta, you know, my sweet Satan is very clearly okay. Okay, that's a about Satanists and uh, heavy metal and young kids and on drugs, killing killing people and all this stuff. You know, but it, it's right up the alley from the Deadbeat at Dawn um, filmmakers. Uh, you know, it's right up his his alley. So. But, but Ricky Six is a far more, I mean, it's a feature-length film, and it's a far more nuanced portrait of the, uh, of the whole Ricky Cazzo thing. I mean, I mean, it, it's very, I mean, it's a simple story. I mean, it's just a, a young kid, a disaffected, you know, youth in a small town, and the, 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 the story, the real story took place around 1984, so, you know, it's, it's the, the golden era of... Uh, you know, uh, the early 80s, you know, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, heavy metal, uh, backwards masking lyrics, you know, drugs, drugs, drugs. And this guy, Ricky Cazzo, is um, the acid king, the local drug dealer. And, and you see in, in the, the, um, the film, uh, you know, Ricky Six, the the Ricky Cazzo character in Ricky in in Ricky Six, who's called Ricky Cowan, they changed the name, uh, is you know is a lot different than the way Jim Van Beber uh, portrays him, and I think it, it it you know the Jim Van Beber Ricky is more of this kind of you know a punky really angry you know whacked out wigged out dude, and uh, the uh, Vincent Carthizer. Uh, portrays this Ricky Cowan and Ricky Six, and it's this, and he's, this is very kind of like this early '80s, just you know, this guy who is just obviously done a lot of drugs, and his his mind is bent and warped in a way that he is just uh, you know out there, and his 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 spiral into this insanity of drug abuse and his obsession with Satanism and power and control. It's very, Ricky Six is, is not like a, a, a shock horror movie. It's very much kind of a coming of age type film where you just see the development of this character and his friend, uh, Tommy, I, I believe that's his name. Is that the, the real person or but it's the film is about the relationship between this guy Ricky uh, Ricky Cowan and his friend, and his friend at the beginning is the jock, is the guy with the drugs, and you think he's going to be the the main character. But then Ricky, you know, un unlike Jim Van Beber's film where it's obvious this this is a badass drug dealer, it's very it's not very nuanced, um, and uh, you know the Vincent Carthizer who. Uh, who is a great actor? Who uh, who is, you know came to prominence a few years after this? He was in Madman, uh, but this is the, and before that he was in Masterminds, and um, and he was in that uh, Larry Clark film Another Day in Paradise. He was uh, an incredible role in Another Day in Paradise, and I, and uh, that I was reminded of. He's playing a very similar role, sim similar character to Another Day in Paradise. But this is, uh, you know, a very Jonathan Brandis uh, esque kind of character. I mean, you you see what Vincent did with his career, and it's like very sad. Cause you think, you know, Jonathan Brandis could have done that, uh, could have, you know. But he's just this very easy, you know, kind of hippie, easygoing type type of guy who gets involved in this all this drugs and insanity, and you kind of, 
you want to, as, as, as an audience member, you're just drawn to this character, but then you're uh, horrified and you're just seeing these spiral into it, and then you see it, you know, uh, the, the drug deal gone wrong, and there's him going down this path of, of uh, murder, of harm to himself and other peoples, and you just kind of say, no, no, no. I think even the final murder scene of uh, Ricky Six, which is again, you know, the story of Ricky Cazzo, uh, the, the story of Jim Van Beber's My Sweet Satan, the story of Ricky Six, the real story and the fake stories, they all end, uh, they all crescendo in this murder scene in, in the woods where, you know, the, this uh, basically this uh, young kid is cornered by some other kids and is beaten and stabbed to death. It's a very, uh, you know, vicious scene. And it's very uh, graphic in, in My Sweet Satan, but I think uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Ricky Six, it's much more well done. It's, it's, a, it's a much more nuanced, better way of, of, of doing it and it's also very, you know, what I think Filardi nailed in this film was the, um, the getting into the uh, acid-soaked hallucinat hallucinatory mind space of Ricky without going overly, you know, there's no, like, solarization filters or anything. There is some effects to kind of give you the little, you know, like the whole bottle eye effect of, you know, when you're, you know, on drugs and you physically, you know, get things kind of obscure around you and kind of vignette. There's some of that stuff. And then he does stuff with colored lights. You know, when there's a scene where, where Ricky and his friend are walking down the street uh, you know, and it's just a cold night, and they suddenly they drop acid, and suddenly the the and it would be beautiful in 35 millimeter. It's very difficult to tell in this bad VHS screener copy on YouTube, but the the houses are all lit with these weird colored lights, and he just this guy they're just they're walking down the street, and it's and it's and it feels very real, and you're getting to the headspace. And this final murder scene, you uh, it's this very hallucinatory uh, uh, thing where people are kind of in different places and and looking, and you know, Ricky is is murdering this guy, but the the people around him are just kind of going. Ah. It's a it's a weird movie because you know I mean Victor Carthizer was you know kind of like you know known from Masterminds and so he was kind of like doing like a Disney type movie and then you know Another Day in Paradise is not a Disney type movie it's very graphic and again this kind of just follows in that and then also the movie has who is in it oh Patrick Renna you know that that young kid that young freckle faced redhead from uh, the Sandlot. Uh, and uh, what else? He did a lot of he. You know, you just see him, and you're like, "Oh, that's that kid from the Sandlot." He plays one of one of Ricky's friends, and um, uh, he's there for the murder as well. And uh, he, it's it's very subversive to see this like this '90s very wholesome Disney child actor type of guy doing uh, smoking smoking uh, grass and doing drugs throughout the entire movie. It's very, very subversive. I mean, the movie does have a lot of drug content, but there's not really a lot of sexual content. It's very, uh, it's a very restrained film. It's the portrait of restraint. It's all about, it's all about the, uh, the drama, these kids growing up in these small, in this small town, trying to find themselves. And uh, it's a very real, it feels like a very realistic portrayal of what the, the early 80s in that kind of, you know, New York Hamlet type of little tiny little town, you know, what that must have been like. It feels, there is a, a, a feeling of authenticity there. Um, it also reminded me a lot of that uh, movie by Vincent Pereira that I really loved called A Quiet Place. That was also about two friends and one of the friends, you know, and, and their friendship kind of spiraling off into to death and, uh, and, 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 and disorder. And that, that movie also had a really incredible performance. I, I, I always want... Well, A Quiet Place was... 
like 2000, it's not, no, it was the late, late nineties as well. So it feels almost like a quiet place was like, a, was almost at the same time or a little bit before this movie. So I, I don't know if there were, I, I doubt there was any inspiration. Uh, I think maybe Vincent was inspired by Ricky Caso. Maybe he might have been inspired by Ricky Caso or some other story or, or so forth. I, you know, I'm not sure. But uh, in any case, if you like kind of dark coming of age type films, if you like true crime, that and this one, this feels like very authentic. It feels like they stuck to the facts and they really. Uh, you know, made something that, I mean, I haven't read the book that it's based on, but it feels very good. Uh, it feels, you know, very true to the, to the, to the real story, uh, apart from changing all the names and, you know, kind of anonymizing everything, because, you know, a lot of the people who were featuring this film are still alive, are still out there. Uh, but, you know, apart from, from that, um, you know, very, very, very realistic. So if you like that, if you love great performances, I mean, this is a, you know, uh, great, great performance by Vincent Carthizer. I mean, this film was never, as I said before, was never released, uh, on, you know, uh, officially. It did, it played film festivals, but then there were issues with uh, the, uh, the music rights, and then it was just, you know, one of those, so many films are uh, stopped from being released because there are investors in the film which are uh, either a bank or other private investors and they just want a check for $5 million to fall in their lap and that never happens. They never get the, the type of deal, distribution deal that they want so they just they kill the movie and they're never released. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, known a lot of, a lot of people uh, like a couple of my uh, professors at film school, they had these little pretty big, you know, like two or three million dollar little independent films, which they couldn't release because the just the people involved, the investors, they couldn't get a, a big enough distribution deal that they uh, would sign off on. So that 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 gets into a hell. And I think that's really what happened with, with Ricky Six, that there were these banks involved and um, just uh, the film... Could never get the distribution deal, and then it and then it just kind of you know a few years on, and then a few years further, and a few years further, and then the film just kind of disappears in, into nowhere. And but uh, it's an unfortunate thing because I think the great thing about this movie is in, is that it, the incredible performance from Vincent Carthizer, and, and it really is uh, makes me think what would have happened to his career. Um, had he had that movie come out in 2000 and people had seen it, you know, uh, it would have been maybe. I mean, he he still has an incredible career uh, today, but it, it it's like it could have he could have maybe hit a little bit sooner. Um, but uh, you know, in any case, that that is you know whatever. But in any case, uh, Ricky Six, great true crime story, uh, and a. A really, really, really interesting movie. If you have some time, I, I would block out some time and check it on YouTube and uh, make sure you don't have anything to do for two hours uh, once you start watching this, because you'll not be able to, you'll not be able to stop it. This is one of those movies. It's like you, you can't put it down. You can't stop it. You've got to. You, once you get, once the, the the characters and the story grabs you. Uh, it's it's uh, it's not something that you can kind of easily uh, quit on and come back to. So it's an engaging, uh, very emotionally charged coming of age tale. Incredible performance. Also incredible performance by Kevin Gage. He plays this little guy named Pat Pagan, who's kind of like Ricky's early mentor. And there's a character like that in the in the real life in the book, and then and there's also kind of a character like that in, in My Sweet Satan, but he's not really, it, it's 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 not as good a character. Kevin Gage in this film, Kevin Gage was uh, was uh, the biker guy in Heat, and he was also in uh, in uh, that unauthorized uh, or whatever I don't know what what it was, but that. Uh, that remake of Last House on the Left a few years ago, um, that that was uh, that was interesting. But uh, he he pulls in a he puts in a, a really good performance, and uh, he was kind of, I think he was a late casting choice. 
he uh, he showed up and uh, flew into Canada and did the thing because the film was shot in Canada. Flew in with his golf club, just according to the director. Great a great podcast, a projected booth podcast on uh, uh, Ricky Six. Watch the movie and then watch that. Uh, but great movie.